your monstera to climb up but you don't want any wall damage you have come to the right video that was the exact things in my mind that i want my monstera to climb up at the same time i don't want any damage to my walls so if i want to remove this monstera my walls will look like there was nothing ever there i mean how cool is that and this approach i'm going to share with you it really doesn't apply to monstera it can be applied to any climbing plant so it could be the most famous epipremnum orium or you could be using any climbing varieties of a philodendron and what i find when you give your plant a good climbing structures they do really well so especially with the monsteras they have got aerial roots and those roots serve a function so when we just try to give them this dried moss that functionality is out of the window and our plant has really not much support to go up especially if you have a giant plant like this i will need a huge moss pole and i don't think i wanted to go that route so i end up picking something completely different and i'm going to share with you how to do that and we only need a few things for this so welcome back to urban tropical this is raj and if you do like my videos please click like and please subscribe and we are going to dive into how to achieve this with no screwing into the wall no holes no drilling just simple things so actually i show you from the distance you will think that it's just a climbing up the wall but the clue is right there you can see the difference in the texture the wall and then there is a board actually i have used pretty much everything left over in in my garden or in from diy project so you don't have to even go to the garden shop or any diy shop these things can be found simply at home if you're big time into gardening i mean pretty much everything is going to be with you anyway so what i thought okay i'm not going to use anything other than this wooden board because wood is quite solid at the same time i can use it really skinny and i can use it really thick so there is a lot of varieties to be used so if i just move in close you can see this is 6 mm wood and when i was looking at it and against my wall wood color is we know it's kind of brown and it was really standing out and i didn't want wood color to stand out even knew i even though i knew that over time it will kind of merge with my plants i won't see it so then i thought okay how can i make it look part of my whole wall so eyes are never ever drawn to the piece of wood so then i just went to b and q and i end up buying this wallpaper so the wallpaper is plain and it matches on to my wall color then i was thinking okay there is so many variations of wallpaper you can buy so i went for really textured matte finish now that has a functionality so if i buy something really smooth i mean i can't do very close up to show you how textured it is it's really te actually you can see it it's so textured that means aerial roots will find it easier to cling on to it and eventually i don't need to give this plant support because aerial roots will be serving its function so number one thing you can use piece of wood you can use i mean 6 mm seems to be quite sufficient it's a really really lightweight now why did i pick lightweight that plays a part in it there are two options i can use my first option is i can screw this board onto the wall all I need is two good screws, one at the top and one right here at the bottom. But because I didn't want to screw anything, I used command strips. So I have used six command strips, which are really heavy duty. I'm just going to show you in the link and I'm just going to show you the image here. These are the command strips which I used. I mean, it wasn't straightforward for me to use this because I actually don't use command strips and aligning was a bit difficult for me. If you are a pro at this, it will be easy peasy for you. And then I just stick the board with the command strips onto the wall and I just let it rest for a good 24 hours because I just wanted to make sure it was a solid enough sticking to the wall. And the next day I potted my plant into this huge pot to do this exercise so i'll come back to this huge pot why i have used this huge pot then i'm thinking okay how do i give it a support because i have done my board i have made it look nice but how do i stick my plant so i ordered these command cable clips 
the biggest command cable clip I bought was insufficient for the job. I mean, I, I can't even figure out why I think about it. I mean, they look really big on Amazon. Once they come in, they were really small. So then I end up using things I have in my home. So which was these soft ties you can buy for your plants. And it's a bit loose here so that I don't suffocate these stems. And then I use this Stanley's staple gun. That's a very handy tool to have. You can get it for like 10 or 15 pounds from Amazon or you can get any brand from any store. It's a really, really handy thing to have. So first I was thinking, okay, I am going to just use the big, huge cable clips, the biggest cable clips you can buy. Now I'm not talking about command. I'm talking about any cable clip you can buy. Trust me, the biggest cable clip I bought, even that was a joke. <laughs> the reason it was a joke because I had to tie up these huge thick stems and no cable clip is big enough for this huge thick stems so the best and cheaper alternative for me was to have these soft cable uh, plant ties have the staple gun and just staple it all along now monstera because it's so huge I had to tie up on many places so for example I started right at the bottom so I have got two thick stems here and two new have uh, come up from the pot so both of those two thick stems they are tied up on many locations so that the plant can support itself and now we are going to move on to the aerial roots so since I have done this and if your stem is quite so this is my next step to do I just couldn't find a staple gun to be honest so I, this is what I was supposed to do staple this here so what exactly will happen once I staple I'm going to get new aerial roots here so the new aerial roots are right next to this wooden board and that means they will start to cling to it and once they start to cling to it it will be self-supporting so wherever my stem was very close to the board the aerial roots have started to stick themselves to it so for example i'm so sorry it's just so hard to capture on the camera so this one you can see it's kind of it's all solid stuck here it doesn't move here it moves i'm actually i think i closed it because i was testing it so this one is so stuck onto the board and if i move on to more closer i just need to rotate the camera this bit here is a sticking on this is again a new one but you can see there is a big gap between the board and the main stem if i did like this which is so up close the next one here will be clinging onto the board so in order to make my process much more faster i am just going to put the same soft tie here and use the gun i mean i was going to shoot that in the video but for some reason I did such a good organization that I can't find my own staple gun. I found everything, the staple nails, I found the soft ties, but the only thing missing is the staple gun. So the main thing is missing. So I will be doing that here as soon as I find it because I know I have time for this to develop aerial roots. But just to give you a view how amazing leaves you're going to get and look at that fenestration. It like it's really, really hard to get that indoors. But I have managed to get it and I cannot actually tell you how happier I am. This is my favorite plant in the whole home. So these, these slits and these holes, they just look amazing. So if I go back to this one right here, now you can see this is developing an aerial root. That means I should be doing this pretty quick because that aerial root will start to cling onto this board. And once that process takes place and it's all there, the plant is going to be self-sufficient in terms of support and it's going to reward me with really huge, huge leaves. The second half of the video, I'm going to talk about how to get these huge leaves and this big, beautiful fenestrations. So if you want to achieve this, one, it has to go really um, out of this window. This plant can't handle direct light. I find that it was absolute nonsense to be honest. So this plant is planted right next to south facing window. That means it gets really harsh sun during the summer months. So now the question is why my leaves are not burning. It's actually really strange how indoor and outdoor works. 
so if my plant is supposed to be like if my plant is supposed to like sunlight and i put it in the shade in the garden it's going to get really huge leaves to compensate for the whole photosynthesis process but the same plant or a different plant i will bring it indoors is going to get much smaller leaves because i haven't given it a sunshine so the outside principle never works inside so this plant if you plant it in a really low to medium light will never ever reward you with this if it did i will imagine that's miraculous to be honest so this plant to produce this huge huge leaves it needs a lot of sunlight the more sunlight you can give it the better leaves you're going to get again coming back to my question the plant is not going to burn because when we talk about indoor bright light and outdoor bright light indoor still there is a big light reduction so i have actually put my philodendron verrucosum right next to the door here where it was in constant sun it never burnt any leaf in fact it thrived if you will see one of my videos i have shown you now if you have given it enough light that means it's going to give you these beautiful leaves but there are other parts to play as well the number one thing after that you need is a huge water quantity in order to support that you will need a huge pot so when i say a huge pot that really depends on the size of your plant as well so this is a right size pot for my plant so this one takes 30 liter of compost i know i am sorted for many many years because they don't actually like to be that much root bound and if you give them enough bright light they are going to grow much faster that means my pot change is going to be much more quickly so once i have given it a huge pot to grow roots in then i have to give it a lot of water of course i'm not going to give it too much water that i'm going to have a rot so the the best way to figure that out is i just go in and i put my finger in if i see the top inch of the soil is dried it's good to go if my finger comes in moist that i know i can wait so please be careful about underwatering and overwatering so the biggest sign of underwatering is my leaves don't look this perked up they start to look droopy and then i know i need to water it i have never managed to actually overwater this plant and uh, overwatering leaves will still go brown yellowish and they get a bit more mushier but when you have a larger plant if you think you have overwatered let it completely dry let it dry for prolonged period than usual and then you know your plant is going to recover really well so now we have done the big part for the roots to grow for the nutrition to absorb and what to absorb actually as a nutrition it does need a lot of a feed so originally i will really feed my plant with the organic matters so i still use worm castings and as a feed i will use a seaweed because i can't give it much regular feed than this plant needs i have moved on to more synthetic feed so now i give it a feed which is which lasts three to six months then i know even if i forget to feed which i always do my plant is still fine all i have to make sure is i water my plant so i have done good watering i have given it a feed which is going to last many 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 months that means i can relax i know my plant is going to get good food and that all in all is going to give you some amazing leaves and then now there is a talk about small monstera form and big monstera form is so new to me i mean i have no way of actually verifying that is true if you look at this monstera and i never give it this kind of growing conditions i would think oh i have got a small monstera form and just because i changed the whole locations it has given me these leaves now i'm going to say i have got big monstera form i really don't know if there are two types maybe some of you guys know that's true please do share it because i'm so confused with this small form and the big form and uh, the last thing i wanted to mention was that sometimes you will find trouble so if it's doing so well that it's going to go to your ceiling and uh, which will happen to me so my plan is once it's reaching two more leaves i'm going to give it a cut right there and propagate this plant the other thing i'm going to mention is that if you can't give it bright light you can still support your monster with artificial grow light and you can always put something on the ceiling that's not grow light that's just my normal light because i don't need to give it grow light it's right in front of south facing of my kitchen so it's getting a lot of sun 
um, I have actually packed this video with so much information and I really really hope that it was useful if it was please let me know how I can make it better or more useful please let me know thank you so much for tuning in bye bye